This video will review how to create simple DXF files for use with Gerbogru lathe. I'll provide examples in both vCarve, which is unfortunately not free, and Onshape, which is free. Three important things to note when doing these kinds of DXF files is that Gerbogru works in metric. The graphical window is oriented to metric. It will run G-code files in Imperial, but the graphics really don't work very well with that. The second thing is the origin of any DXS file must be on the right-hand edge of the drawing and incorporate the origin point, and I'll show that as we progress. And the final thing is only the lower half of a drawing is needed there are several examples of DXF files provided with Gerbogru, a number of chess pieces, for example. So I'll start initially with vCarve because it demonstrates the principles a little more clearly. Starting in vCarve, I've created a material surface that's 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters. I oriented it with the origin in the very center of this. The dimensions are otherwise arbitrary. And the reasons for this will be uh, shown here shortly. A lot of programs have the origin point in the bottom left hand corner and that would be Inkscape and Lightburn for example and many CNC CAD programs but uh, that doesn't work in this situation. It must be in the center so that you can draw to the left from there. So in this case I created a very simple fly cutter that I can cut on my on my metal lathe. So initially I created a rough outline which is two boxes. Uh, I can show the dimensions here. I did it in millimeters, although this is intended for an imperial application. And I've incorporated the origin in this. All I need for Gerbogru is this bottom outline. And I don't include this vertical line on the left hand side because I don't want uh, the lathe to cut it off. On this side, uh, this can be flat and supported with the tailstock, but on the left hand side I leave that just attached to the stock. So after having my rough outline I added some bevels just for strength since this is going to be spinning at four to eight thousand RPM and then I just trace that outline starting from the origin going down across, follow the bevel, and then out here. So if I shut off that layer, that's all I need for Gerbogru. So if I highlight that, I can export that as a DS DXF file. I could use SVG as well, but DXF uh, is just as simple, and then I can save it. So here is Gerbogru lathe set up. This is version 1.1.0 in January of 2025. I'm sure this will eventually change and be upgraded. In any event, I've moved the cutter closer to the chuck just so things can be seen. I'll import the DXF file I just created of the little fly cutter. There it is there. I wanted it in 0.6 inches, but I did it in millimeters. And when it recognizes one of these, Gerbogru lathe automatically creates a three-dimensional version of this by revolving it around the axis. And that's why it's so important that the origin point be exactly on the right-hand edge. And then it'll end up being in the middle of the part. The cutter, for my purposes, doesn't matter today. If you go to the 2D window, you can see the cutter and you can see all the passes. 
You can set your depth of cut and your speeds. This is in millimeters per minute. You can set whether you want rough or smooth, whether you want some retraction. For example, if I change the retraction down to two millimeters, then there's a whole lot less movement, so it works faster. My in-feed depth here is 0 0.1 millimeters, and that's very, very conservative. I don't need an in-feed or an indent on the left. Um, if I did that, if you watch right here, and I set that to five millimeters, then it'll take it an extra five millimeters to the left in the rough stock. This cutter is enough to follow this bevel, and uh, the project will will work properly. The G code is already created. You can examine it if you wanted to. And that's with this little wrench right here. And there it is all set up, ready to go. Going back to the 3D view, this can be run in high-speed simulations, so you can see how it's all going to start and part way through. When it gets down to the, the short strokes, you can slow it down so you can see the final pass, for example. By clicking off the high-speed simulation. And you can see how it'll follow it along. I haven't asked for an indent on the left for the finishing pass, and that's why it doesn't go that far. And if you're happy with that, you can save the G-code and run it. So now I'll show the creation of a similar DXF file in Onshape. This is a free online CAD program. Uh, the catch with the free is anything you create is in the public domain, uh, but for my purposes that doesn't matter. Uh, I've already created a file here, but ordinarily you would go to the Create button and click on Document, and then a box would come up and you could name it. So I've already created this. It's blank, there's nothing in there, and this is your starting screen. Here is the origin right in the center of all the planes. I like to select the top plane and look at that, and that's where I'm going to do my drawing. To do a drawing, you need to start a sketch. You click on the sketch button, and it's put it on the top plane already. If you don't want to look at the planes, you can turn them off by pressing the P button. But I don't mind seeing the intersection here. So I'll zoom in on that. Leave this sketch window as it is for now. So I'll zoom in on the center. I can move that to the right, holding down my scroll uh, wheel. And similar to before, I'll use the primitives, which have appeared since I pressed Sketch. I want a rectangle, and I'll put it here, and I really want it touching this origin button. I want it to be 25 by 6.25. And I also want another rectangle that joins that one, and I want that to be 25 by 15.24. Now these are not centered around this midline yet. So the next thing I have to do is draw a simple line that'll cover that along the midline. If I right click, I get escape line. I can also use the escape key or I can go back to line and click on that. To get these rectangles symmetrical around this center line, I'll click on this. Now normally this looks like this when you start the program, and with the drop-down menu, uh, menu I can go down to symmetric, and I want that one. So by clicking on the top of this rectangle, holding the shift key, clicking on the bottom, 
and clicking on the line, then you see the rectangle had moved up. And I'll do the same. Click on the bottom, hold shift key, click on the top, and hold the and click on the line. And this is just adjusted down. Now this sketch is my rough features of the outline that I want. And I think that is enough for now, just as in the other program. So I click the check button, that sketch is done. So now I want to outline this to make my DXF. So I click sketch again to make a new sketch and I'll just stick it on top of this one. You can see sketch 2 is there. And I just want to do a simple line again, starting at the origin, going down. Now I can just stick in my bevel here, go out to here, and then either click on the button here, or I could right click to get out of it as well. And that sketch is done. So I can click check. If I click on, just single click on sketch two, it shows my line that I just drew. I can right click that and export it as a DXF drawing. So I'll say on shape, fly cutter. And what that'll do is export it to my download folder. I'll take that from the download folder and stick it in another folder. So here we are back at Gerbilgru Lathe and I will import that DXF file I just created on shape fly cutter and open it and it's done just the same as with the VCarve example. In the 2D, you can see this if you delete the job up here or hide it. Uh, at any rate, if you delete the job, then all these lines will disappear. And you can adjust the parameters just the same. You can change the tool, of course, and you do that on the tool menu, I've created a number of these, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, say a right-hand tool, or say a neutral tool, and that changes how the calculations are done. If, if an angle is too steep, uh, then the tool might not be able to reach in there, or if there's an angle on the other side, it might not be able to reach, in which case you have to come from the other direction as well. The tools are up in the current tool list and you have to make some room when you call up a tool, so shape D for example. You have to call up shape D and get the parameters in there so the length of the edges, that's one of these edges here, the width of course, and the clearance angle, in this case it was 62 degrees. The way you create a tool file to play with is you single click on something like shape D and right click and say copy. And if you go down to the bottom of the list you've got your shape D copy there so if you right click and rename it I'll just say it's a test file and you click on that one here's the name and you can start changing some of the parameters based on whatever your cutters are. It's not immediately available I've found you have to exit the program and then restart it and then it'll be saved just like that. In any event, that's the way you create a DXF file in Onshape that you can use relatively straightforward and if you learn Onshape you can go on to create three-dimensional forms because extruding and revolving and connecting different parts is extremely easy in that program and it's free. I hope you've been able to learn something from this. Thank you for watching.